Hey, this is Ernesto, and today I'm showing you five of my favorite ways to use thermal from output. I'm not here to waste your time, so let's get to that first tip. The presets in here are so good that you can just use them and call it a day. There's a ton of depth of thermal, so building something from scratch could take a while. Luckily, Output has given us loads and loads of presets divided up into different categories, and these presets are really, really good. So after loading up a preset, all I really fiddle with are the macro knobs here and the mix slider. That's kind of all I really touch. Sometimes I'll adjust the distortion band here to make sure they're targeting the best frequencies, but that's pretty much it. So this is what I would do to this drum loop, for example. Let's drop that a little bit. Make sure it's addressing the right frequencies. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, just that and I'm really happy with it and I would just roll with it and keep playing and writing and all that stuff. So if you're out there wondering if thermals presets are enough, then I would definitely say yes. Before I keep going, if you wanna learn more or buy thermal, then click my affiliate link down below. It is such a good plugin, so I hope that you get it if you don't already have it. All right, next tip, try using thermal to create rhythms. So to do that, you can use the LFOs here to create all kinds of rhythm. To show you what I'm talking about, I'm gonna bring up this preset here in the rhythmic section called Grime Cuts. I'm gonna bring the mix slider all the way down to dry. Thermal is on this pad, by the way. It's great, it's just a lovely pad that we hear there. But let's say we're gonna repeat this section uh, later on in the song. We would, you know, wanna spice it up, make it sound a little bit different. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring it up to wet. I think that's so crazy. So in addition to the saturation, thermal is bringing rhythm. It's bringing movement to this pad. So let me break down this preset. So in this top LFO here, Transcate 03, this has been assigned to the drive and the output of this first stage of distortion. Drive and output, like if you just add a LFO wave, like that's adding movement. That's kind of all you have to do. If you want to change the shape of this rhythm and LFO wave, just click one of these nodes, click and drag. And you can, you can alter it however you like there. Something else I really like to do is adding in this humanized knob. It just adds in some randomization. You'll see that every cycle, like these little gray lines are redrawn and that's gonna be like the new path of that cycle. So let's increase the humanize quite a bit and here how, how it changes this loop. Probably a little bit too much. Yeah, I think that's really cool. It's, it's allowing every cycle to be just a little bit different, but similar enough to where it still makes sense. I probably have to humanize up a little bit too much, but this is a great way to add in that randomization, that humanization that these kind of gates can use sometimes. Okay, this next tip is something I started trying recently, and that's creating some pretty gnarly textures using the feedback and time knobs. So let me show you how to get that sound. So this is a preset that I tweaked and all I really did was assign this macro to two parameters, time and feedback. To get that feedback texture, what you wanna do is increase the feedback knob and decrease the time at the same time. So that's what this knob is doing. So as I increase it, you see how the feedback increases, time decreases. And that's really all you gotta do to get that crazy texture. So what I'll probably do is just record all these different takes and just grab snippets of the best one and use those textures for accent points or for like ear candy. Uh, and it just sounds crazy and interesting. If you're enjoying this video, please consider supporting this channel by liking this video. The more support this channel gets, the closer I get to making more content for you full time. Okay, this last part, I wanna share some quick tips on how to get more from the modulation section. So the first quick tip is to remember to use the humanized knob here to give your modulation some variation. I already showed you this earlier and I hope you saw the benefit of adding in that little bit of randomization uh, to make things a bit more human-like. 
Okay, the next quick tip is that if you don't like drawing in your own LFO shapes like me, you're in luck if you click the name of the LFO, you are given a whole bunch of presets, preset shapes. So like step down, open that up, boom, we have a shape there. You can also click and cycle through it this way. There's a lot of good shapes in here to get, help get you started. And the last quick tip is that you can set modulation to bipolar. To do that, all you gotta do is, you know, after you click and assign some modulation, if you right click this blue circle, you can uh, hit set to bipolar. So now the modulation will go to a positive and negative value like that. If you want to switch back, just right click again, set to unipolar, and now it's going in one direction. Hopefully these quick tips can help you have more fun with modulation inside of thermal. All right, those are five of my favorite ways to use thermal from output. If you're enjoying what you're learning, please like and subscribe. It'll help other music makers find this channel. Thanks so much for watching. Later.